there's no better feeling than a personal win. And the State Farm Personal Price Plan can help you do just that. Talk to a State Farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices are based on rating plans that vary by state. Coverage options are selected by the customer. Availability, amount of discounts and savings, and eligibility vary by state. Most tax pros leave a message. It's Jane. I'm moving on to a TurboTax expert who beat your price. Adam Devine, tell him how I feel. Hey, tax pro, she's been thinking twice. Just believe TurboTax will beat your price. This is a tax break. Uh. Switch to a TurboTax live expert and we'll beat what you paid your pro last tax season. Make the switch at TurboTax.com slash beat your price. TurboTax full service only. Sign up by 12 20 2024 and file by 4 1 2025. Full details at TurboTax.com slash beat your price. What exactly was the difficulty she was having? With her CPR compressions, she was bouncing all over the chest. Uh, she was having trouble keeping the right pace. Okay. Uh, and one of the Staying critical... alive, staying yep. alive. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the plaintiff, Kimberly Evans. She says she paid the defendant for some CPR certification classes because she wanted to become an instructor, and the guy failed her. She took it in stride because he offered to let her take the course a second time for free. But he doesn't return her calls, so she's suing for $513.03. The amount she paid for the course and a textbook. This is the defendant, Christopher. He says he didn't fail the plaintiff. He just told her she needed to work on her skills and coordination and offered to let her take the course again for free. She never rescheduled. He's gone out of his way for her and owes her nothing. He's accused of refusing a refund. All parties, please raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. People's Court is now in session and the Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is not presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Ms. Evans, you are suing Mr. Christopher's company. You have authorization from the owner to be here to represent? I do. Uh, because you paid them $513.03 to get you certified as a CPR instructor, and you're not. All right, so tell me what happened. I initially reached out um, to um, what I say the Red Cross Association um, is where I found um, Mr. Christopher and his company. Um, my goal was just to uh, get certified as a CPR instructor. At that time, I did not have my... Um, not. Was there a particular reason you were trying to be certified? Um, actually, I had already been a CPR instructor before. Instructor, not, instructor. Just, not just to know CPR, but to be an instructor. Were you going to open a business or what, what were you going to exactly. do? Exactly. I okay. was there to um, certify to not only become CPR certified as well as an instructor. I had been an instructor before and I taught classes years ago, probably about five uh, years ago, and I wanted it's to... not that long ago. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say 25, 30 years ago, and I'm thinking, how that. old was she when she... All right, but so I, go... I, no, I was in my 30s. Okay, I mean, all so. right. <laughs> so but, go on. But um, I had uh, wanted to... You know, I was just really just trying to get back into the business again. It's something that I enjoy doing. So um, um, I went to the website, signed up for the classes. Took a little bit of uh, getting there, but um, came to his class and... When you say it took a little bit of getting there, what do you mean? Uh, because we did reschedule. Um, Who's, whose idea was it to reschedule? Uh, it, was, it was initially when we had first started, um, it was a blended course that we had to take. Um, and then when it came for the classroom time, I had like dental surgery. I had a couple of things going on. And How many times was, did you reschedule? I probably rescheduled twice. Okay, go on. And, uh, and he was nice enough to let me uh, reschedule. Um, so finally, March 19 came around, went into his course. Um, I thought we had a good rapport. We talked about different things, kind of, I thought we related on a diff, uh, different areas. Was it a private instruction? 
Uh, was there other students? It was a class. It a was class. had class. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that, you know, everything was going well. Um, and when it came for giving the the CPR lesson on a dummy, that's where things got a little complicated. What I, happened? Oh, well, the the CPR mannequin that he had, um, the I remember that when you the mouth went all the way up, it was not even an, in a normal position of where the mouth would be for a you and I would be if you know we were you know out. <laughs> so it was all, like all the way up. But he made us aware that we had to turn it all the way up. We had to breathe into it, but it was just difficult breathing into that. And I was like, I just remember telling myself like, oh my God, uh, I'm going to be out with the patient. We're going to both need us. Were you, you getting know? winded? I was getting so winded. How about the know? other students? How were they doing? Um, I, honestly, I didn't notice what the other students How did the doing? other students do? They did well. I'm... All right, so uh, did you pass anybody that day? Yes, ma'am, I passed. Did you pass everybody except for her? I did. All right, so what happens when someone's not going to pass? Well, early in the class, we go over basic fundamentals. Uh, she had a little bit of difficulties here and there, but we, she was trying, we were working really hard, so we worked together. Said, we're going to practice a lot today. Did it look like she was teaching five years ago? Possibly. <laughs> and, uh, but she, she was... What a she, diplomat. <laughs> she, had, she had the heart. She was working hard at it, but there was a lot of things that we needed to kind of perfect, and we didn't have time to... You know, we worked as much as we had time for, and then we were going to work on it all day long. And I told her, I said, you know, we got to work on our skills, but we got some more practice time. Hopefully, we may be able to get through it better this afternoon. And? And it didn't get better. And she was having a difficult time getting through the what, two minutes. What exactly was the difficulty she was having? With her CPR compressions, she was bouncing all over the chest. Uh, she was having trouble keeping the right pace. Okay. Uh, and one of the Staying critical... alive, staying yep. alive. I remember. <laughs> yeah. And we were trying to get it going. It just, she just couldn't keep the right pace and then was having trouble with the depth of the compressions. And part of being an instructor is you have to be able to do it perfect to be able to teach. And part of being an instructor, part of the, being the person who's going to save my life, That's you right. have to be able to do it right. What do you mean, instructor? I don't, I don't care about her business. I care that she's the only other person in the room who can save me. That's a fact. All right, so go on. Well, I mean, not in this room because you're here. <laughs> no, but, you know, you in a room, a random room. Um, all right, so what is it the two of you agree that day? Okay, I explained to her, I said, she, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't going to be able to pass her, okay? okay? But she was trying really hard. She was working at it. She wanted it. So I said, let's work, do this. We still had to go over some basic class. Have you ever, like, actually said you failed and then said goodbye? And I, they ha- I have twice in five years. Okay, but so you try not to do that. I try not to do that. I like people to be learn happy and be skilled. Right. Okay, I, you know. so you told her she could come back, and then what happens? This and is what day? What day was the instruction? March 17th. March 17th. Now, let me actually go to you, Ms. Evans. March 17th, everybody's on the same page. You're going to put a little more work into it, right? And you, you don't have a problem with that. But then what happens? Didn't have a problem with it. Took his criticism. I was actually happy that, you know, I was like, it's lunchtime. I'm hungry. Let me go. And I felt like, you know what? He knew I had mannequins at home on my own. I said, you know what? I will go work on it. All right. A couple of weeks go by and, you know, I, I, I reach out and say, you know, hey, I'm ready to... When was the first time you reached out? I had reached out... April 20th. Is that the first time you reached out? Because this was March. Right. So So the first time you reached out was April 20th? Uh Uh-huh. That's what I'm showing here. You didn't reach out before April 20th? I said, I text 420, still no response. Is that what you say? uh, On this, on my text, yeah. Right. So you must have texted before that. Uh, You give me texts that start on a date that's cut off before April 20th where he says, I'm working up my May calendar tomorrow. I'll forward you the dates. And you say, thank you. Okay. Then on April 20th, you say, so you must have reached him before April so 20th. So if we're going back to the, the, the text, April 13th, I apologize. Okay. So do 13th. you have your phone with you here? I do. Are you looking at it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, can I have it? Let me see when you actually start to reach him. So that's what it is. Because you sounded frustrated there. already, so you must have. <laughs> reached out before that but like and you can just scroll hello my name is Kimberly I am scheduled to attend your class 413 I need to reschedule oh maybe that's why I didn't get it that's when the text started but I got the that's email that makes me go hmm oh no 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 well no. but I'll watch you long see, enough. it's the only one that hurts you I'll and it's the only you one you didn't enough, send me no, <laughs> no I sent the emails as well if you so. watch me then you know I was gonna say <laughs> give me that phone <laughs> I need to reschedule. It conflicts with another class I'm taking. Also, I want to take the CPR training separately from the instructor 
training, I guess that's what you mean. Mm -hmm. So I make sure I'm doing it correctly. Do you have anything at the end of May? And he says, hi, Kimberly, I am working up my May calendar tomorrow. I'll forward you dates. You say thank you. And then on April 20th, you say good morning. Just checking to see if you made the schedule for May. And then on April 22nd, I have tried several times to reach out to be rescheduled for the CPR class and instructor course. I'm very disappointed when I left your class that day. You assured me that I could return. I have emailed numerous times and called all members and gotten little to no response. At this point, I'm no longer... What happened between April 20th and April 22nd? I believe there were some emails that were in between as well. Hello, Kimberly, he says. I've been on vacation on a cruise. I'm sorry you did not receive the email I sent. So you sent her an email saying what? What the May schedule was? Yes, ma'am. I have just docked in Galveston. We have classes on May 2, 13, and June 1. Chris. And then he sends a copy of the email that he had sent you on what day? The day I got back from... I don't have it... it I believe that's my email. No, yeah. uh, it might be. I don't yeah, think I, I think sent her an email at that time. I sent her the class dates. And well, then I in, didn't... Your, in your text, you say, I'm sorry you didn't get the email I sent. So you had sent... I an... I'd sent an email on, in the end of uh, April before I went on the cruise. Before you went on the cruise. And Do you have that email? I... I did not get an email, sir. Don't think I brought it. Nope. But in any event, let's assume there's no, no response. The first thing I have is your text saying... I'm scheduled for 4.13, but I can't make it. You're rescheduling a third time. And then you say on the 20th, you say, good morning. Just checking to see if you made the schedule for May. I need two dates. And then on the 22nd, you just totally reverse course and say, give me my money back. And he's like, oh, sorry you didn't get my email, which he can't find now. Okay. But we have classes on May 2nd, 13, and 1. He tells you all that on April 23rd, not 22nd. On April 23rd, which is the day after you wig out. Um, why don't you just pick a date then? Why is it your demand? What did they do wrong? They took three days? You s rescheduled three times. The guy was on vacation. It took a little more than three days because you had asked for it before. But you were the one who rescheduled on the 13th. Um, honestly, I believe that what's not being shown is just the emails because I emailed... Show me the emails. I started emailing between. Can I yeah. uh, get the phone? Again? Yeah. Actually, Honor, that was her fifth rescheduling, by the way. Fifth? Yes, ma'am. I don't remember. Well, I what were the two I missed? Time. March 17th was the fourth reschedule. April was the fifth reschedule, and she was looking for May, which would have been the sixth. Okay. So the this is where I started on uh, March 31st and April 5th. Those yeah. Two. Those are the two that are, like, in between that I... Uh, well, you got scheduled. March 31st, you got scheduled for April 13th, and you rescheduled. Uh, and, and, and let me just reiterate, he didn't reach out to me even on the 13th to say, initially they would send me something saying, hey, you're, and I can show yeah, that in email it. saying, hey, you're, you're now coming to class. I didn't even get that on the No, 13th. I get that. I get that. But what I have to determine is, is this a sufficient breach of contract on their part to not have returned your email in a okay. prompt manner that would entitle you to get a refund after okay. all the time they put into this? Okay. That would entitle you to get a refund. And a judge in my position is going to weigh the number of times they've accommodated you. Okay. Right? I get it. Yeah. I am not going to order them to return your money because I don't feel that they have done something so wrong that it would require that. Yes. Somebody should have reached out to her when she sent the first email that she couldn't make it the 13th. Is there nobody, is this a one-man show? What's going on over there that nobody else is? She was emailing my partner. After she failed my class, she quit pretty much corresponding other than a few texts here and there. She, all the emails. All right. In any event, That's based on true. the number of times they have accommodated you, I do not find that taking between April 20th and, and April 23rd to give you May dates after you rescheduled the week before constitutes a sufficient breach that would entitle you to get your money back. Um, so I'm ruling in favor of the defendant in this case. Good okay. luck, folks. Thank, Thank you. you. So the plaintiff fails to get the $513 she was seeking from the defendant in this case. Let's see what she has to say about it now. She's probably not too happy. Ms. Evans, tell me what you're thinking right now. Well, I'm not happy that it, it uh, went in the wrong way, but he was accommodating. I don't want to take from that. You know, I just wanted him to do the right thing and just be accommodated. That's all I really wanted out of it. Well, let me ask you, did, have you given up on the idea of getting the C, C, you know, the certification you wanted? Of course not. No. 
I'm still gonna get my certification. Um, like I said, I really wanted to work with him and go through it, but you know, I'll get it. Well, sorry, but you canceled too many times and that's, uh, that's why the judge found the way she did. So good luck to you, no, all right? thank you. Okay, all right, let's talk to Mr. Christopher now, or Christopher. Um, I would imagine he feels kind of relieved. Christopher, what are you thinking? Uh, I am relieved. I feel sorry for Kim with all she's gone through, but we did reschedule multiple times. Um, I, I just, I, I can only go so far. In any event, congratulations. You're off the hook, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, good enough. Thank you so much. All right, Harvey, interesting. What do you think? So, Doug, this case does involve um, failing to respond to an email. I will just tell you this, that if you're in a legal dispute and somebody sends you some kind of a demand, you don't have an obligation to respond. But if you think it might end up in court and it looks like you're just blowing the other person off, that could hurt you before a judge. Since it's hurricane season, how do you prepare your house when a hurricane is coming? Do you stay in the house? Have you ever been stuck in a hurricane? Hurricanes come around all, almost every year or every other year down in Florida because we're right in that alley where they come up through the Caribbean. Um, but ours, the process for us in our household goes kind of like this. I'm sitting in my easy chair, you're at your desk working. You get up from the desk after reading about it or hearing about it, you go, John, there's a hurricane coming. And I, I maybe look up and I go, yeah, it'll probably miss us. It won't hit us. Don't worry about it. It'll turn north, right? And then you, a few minutes later, you come in and go, I really think you should bring all of the pots, <laughs> all of the potted plants and the furniture off of the patio and off of the dock behind the house and start bringing it all in. And then I look up and I'll say, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, we'll get around to that. And then maybe a couple hours later, you come back in. John, you know, it's heading right towards us. It's bearing down on us. The trees are it's bent sideways. It's a category sideways. four. The trees are bent <laughs> sideways. And then I'll say something like, yeah, I got one of my best guys on that stuff out on the and patio. And then I start screaming, well, get a better guy. Because right. the guy I'm looking at is right. still in his easy chair. Right. By the time I go out there to start moving stuff, you have to like tie a rope around my waist <laughs> and hold it yeah. from the patio door because the water's coming up. But we usually, we get it off there eventually. We and, get uh, it off at away. the last minute. We do get right. it off. Like we get it off right. before the winds begin, right. usually, because I'm screaming at you at the exactly. top of my life. Um, but, and we happen to be, our house happens to sit on the highest point of our city, yeah. even In though Florida, we're on the water. Which Florida is Florida low is anyway. below sea level. But so just most by things, luck, right, on, by luck, for we're some reason, bluff. we're on this bluff where everybody else needs to come to our house, which right. has happened because right. even though we're on the water, the water doesn't go, we're yeah. 14 feet above sea level, right. oddly. So, so usually it's not even an evacuation zone. This is the plaintiff, Donna. She says she moved out of the defendant's condo after being an excellent tenant for five years. And they're trying to pull a fast one on her. That's right. They refused to return her entire security, claiming she damaged the place. But the pictures they're showing her is of another unit. She's not about to be ripped off and is suing for the $5,000 she's now owed. These are the defendants, Kamal and Soutir Apal. Kamal says the plaintiff left their condo in disastrous, non-rentable condition. The plaintiff had no respect for the place or for them and is lucky they only withheld half of her security. The woman's extremely hostile and she has some nerve suing them for $5,000 today. They're accused of trying to pull a switcheroo. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says the defendants, her former landlords, are simply scoundrels and they owe her a ton of money, uh, let's say specifically five grand. But the defendants say the plaintiff left their condo in a disastrous, non-rentable state and they owe this rude woman nothing. It's the case of condo mania. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, all right, Ms. Donna, you are suing your landlords for $5,000 because they kept $550 of your security deposit. Tell me what happened. I rented the apartment in 2016. I've been an excellent tenant ever since. I gave him notice in January that I'll be moving, I'm looking to buy. 
So I'm going to go stay with my daughter until I moved out April 3rd. He has a realtor, brought a lady over. The last day I was there to look at the apartment, she wanted somewhere to rent. The place was in excellent condition. You lived there for five years and then you're moving out because you want to buy your own place. And mm -hmm. when do they first tell you we're only giving you back? How does it happen that you get only half of your deposit? Okay, I sent in my forwarding address on the 5th. I move out on the 3rd. I sent in my the forwarding address. The 3rd of address. what? 3rd of April. Okay. April. Never heard anything from him. Two months later, I reached out to him. I said, what's going on? It's now on 60 days. I haven't heard anything from you. And that's when he sent me a text saying, oh, I'm keeping your security deposit. I'm like, why? He said, I didn't clean the vent. I'm like, what vent are you talking about? The vent wasn't even my responsibility. The ones I'm responsible for, it's there. I'm responsible for the big one that has the AC in it. Okay. The AC tank, I'm responsible for changing. The changing the filter, of, all right. Yes, which I do. So the first you hear that you're not going to get your security deposit is in a text two months later? Two months later, after I contacted him and asked Did him Did you ever get anything on? in writing from them saying that you weren't no, getting your security still deposit? Waiting. Still waiting, no. Okay. Mr. Upal, waiting. you are the son, correct? Kamalapar. Correct, yeah. I'm the, uh, I'm the son. I basically manage all of the uh, finances for our entire uh, real estate portfolio. Okay. So How many I apartments can... do you guys have? We have multiple. No, that's not an answer. Okay. Um, yeah, we have 20, 30 plus. That's not an answer either. What's the answer to my question? It's a super direct question. How many apartments do you guys manage? Own well, they're, portfolio. They're, they're under, you're, the, you're the financial director. Just answer my question. 23. 23. Why was that so hard? All right. Um, different names. I, I, it doesn't matter. I just want to know how many you guys own. You know, you know what the question means. Pretend we're at a cocktail party. If I say, how many apartments you guys own? There'd be a ready answer. So don't be cagey with me because I hate that. All right. So there's 23 right. apartments. Now, when she left, do you have an actual independent? Because I imagine that, you know, you're managing a lot of stuff. Do you, do, do you actually handle the day-to-day -day stuff when a tenant says, I'm leaving, and then there's an inspection there? Or that's, that's not really your role? No, so I basically manage all the finances on the books. We have a realtor on the ground um, that basically helps us uh, list all of the units. Um, we also have a maintenance team down there. And for okay, so you're, fi you're physically in Canada and these apartments, are, are they all in Florida or are they in different places? The, my, the 23 that I mentioned are in, in Florida. Okay, so now uh, how did you learn that she had left it in less than optimum condition? So after she moves out, we have a, a realtor that goes in and tries to list the property for rent. Um, and at that time, our realtor basically told us that um, the unit is in a horrible state. It's damaged. It needs a significant, significant amount of work to re-rent it. Okay. Uh, we are not going to be able to re-rent it that way. We um, essentially spent uh, over $15,244 on this unit um, to get it back into a state that was rentable. Uh, I do acknowledge that, you know, that $15,000 was not obviously all attributed to her. Um, as you know, with any property, there's general wear and tear that goes over time. Um, we have to change all the appliances. We have to do everything. But it's like a can of worms. Once you start doing something, you have to do a bunch of other things, right? Um, so what we had done is her security deposit was $1,100. We gave her back $550. The unit that we, the things that we charged her for was a deep cleaning. Um, the dryer vents were what? broken and dirty. And there's a list of a bunch of other things. Do, I, no, I, I need specifics. You, the things that you withheld the money for were deep cleaning. How much did you withhold for deep cleaning? $250. And then um, what else did you withhold for? Uh, the broken and dirty dryer vent. The dryer vent was very dirty and it was also broken. There was a lot of um, stuff in it that needed to be cleaned out that was never never really taken care of. Uh, so that was another $150. But what did you do when you say that had to be taken care of other than sticking your hand in and yanking that stuff out? What else has to be done that would... They replaced it. They replaced, they replaced, replaced the, the dryer? Yeah. The dry, all the appliances were new, and the vents also had to be able to replace that as well. Okay, I'm asking specifically for how you come to the 150 because the dryer vent was dirty. It's a service charge that our, 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 uh, our contractor gave us. So our contractor did, a, so basically we got a list of all of the damages, that everything that needed to be done in the unit, right? And what we agreed was that, you know, 
returning half of the deposit was reasonable. Who's uh, we agreed? Wait, wait. When you say we agreed, who agreed? So that's a conversation between my father and, and the uh, the plaintiff. So you can probably okay. I'm it. sorry. So that's I want to I want to talk about that now. According to your your father tells you that he <clears throat> and she agreed to half. Yes. Watch this. Did you agree to accept half, Ms. Donna? No. Okay. So let's that's talk to your dad. Here. Let's go ahead and switch over to your dad a second. Hello. Hello. So I want to know specifically, did you have a discussion with Ms. Donna about, and did she say, yeah, okay, I'll accept half of the security deposit? I talked to her once in the phone, and the, the place was really, really damaged. Like the appliance was not clean because I take care of those things myself instead of my son. Because the maintenance guy sent me all the pictures. The filter was never changed in the AC for four years since she was there. And then, then she called me because the, my maintenance guy said I should sue for all the cleaning and everything there, which is like a three, four thousand dollar. Then I talked to their attorney to sue her. The attorney said it's going to cost you two thousand dollar to sue her. Then I said, you know what, I'm going okay, to. Yeah, I had okay, but I'm I know, there. I'm I know, but there. I just want you to answer my question because I, I yes, I'm I talked driving to her a train here. Said, no, 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 no. Said, just okay, answer. You know, no, just answer my question. My question is this: Did you and she agree? Or did you just tell her, listen, I'm only returning half and this is why and I'm being very generous. Did she ever agree that she would accept half? That's my question. Well, I told her I'm going to send you half the money and then she hung up on the phone on me. Okay, so that's not an agreement. That's what I wanted to make sure that we were on the same page there. Okay, no. That's, okay, no, no, that that's the said. opposite no, of an agreement. Okay, I got it. No, no problem. Also, uh, okay, so now what I want to do is... No, no, stop, 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 stop. Stop, put your son back on. I need to go through the pictures. Let's switch to the son. Okay. Can you see that picture I have up? Yes. Okay. And what is that a picture that's not, that's not, of? That's a, that's a vent inside the, uh, the unit. That's a picture that our uh, real estate agent contractor sent us. Do you no, have an affidavit not. from the real estate person or the contractor that these are the pictures of her apartment? I do not. What is this a picture of, Mr. Upal? This is, this is the stuff that came out of one of the vents. What is that a picture of? This is like damage around the bathroom. But what is it a picture of? It's what? just messiness, dirtiness that was left in the unit after she vacated. Yeah, but it, it doesn't look like your average. I mean, I, I don't. What physically is this item? I don't think you know. I'm, I, I my guess is that it's whatever fell out of when they took out the the register or whatever. But I don't know. Yeah, I'd I, like I to know. Normally, here's how it works. Don't talk over me. Normally, how it works is the landlord tells me this is a picture of X or they bring as a witness the person who can tell me what this is a picture of, where it came from. You can't just say grime. <clears throat> like, you know, I've got to kind of figure out what I'm looking at. What is this is the dryer, right? Yes. No, it's not. What no, do you say not. this is, Ms. Donna? I have no clue. Oh, but the dryer well, how do you know I it's had, not the dryer? It, it, because it doesn't have that color around the rim. It doesn't have the blue thing. It's all white. No, There's this, no I, blue, I think, nothing around. I don't think this is a, a blue colored dryer. I just think that's the lighting. Well, this is not the one I had because when that landlord came, that, that uh, realtor came that evening with the, with the girl, I was actually using the dryer and I stopped it. She opened it. She looked in there. There was nothing. I couldn't be using a dryer for five years. Do you have pictures of how you there. left the apartment, Ms. Donna? Bird. Yes or no? Yes, I do. Okay, hold on one second. Yes, I'm going to keep looking at these pictures. Hold on. What is this a picture of, Mr. Paul? It's just, it's just never been cleaned, right? So that's that, that's the situation here. You have to do a deep cleaning to the unit. Once a deep cleaning is done, then, you know, we did additional upgrades. Because All right, Ms. Donna, uh, what is this a picture of? That's a picture of the bathroom. Okay, the that's bath your bathroom, right? Paint, that's your bathroom. The paint being stripped from the wall. What paint is stripped from the wall? It's just super filthy. No, you know. no, because the picture I have is completely different. We're going to see one. that in one so second. Is, what is this a picture of, Mr. Upal? The baseboard is just showing that there's dirt. and No, 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 like no, 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 no. This is not the apartment. That's not the size style I have. We have 32-inch tile throughout this whole apartment. That's not 32-inch tile. No, 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 no. 32-inch tile throughout that whole apartment. So where did those tile come from? Is this your living room? No. We have no, no plugs in the living room. Okay, is this your bedroom? In the living room, no. Do you know what room this is supposed to be, Mr. Upal? No clue. Mr. I don't know. I can explain to yeah. you the... Uh, okay, put him back on. Mr. Uh, Upal, can you tell me what room this is? 
No, I don't. Okay. It's, I, I know because it's I haven't seen the apartment at all. I never seen the apartment. Okay, so you can't answer that. I got it. Who took the pictures? The realtor? Realtor and the maintenance guy. Okay, so are they here to testify, yes or no? No. All right, is this your kitchen, Ms. Donna? No. I mean, does it look like it? No. No. How do you know that it's not? I mean, does your kitchen have a refrigerator? Is it white? Does it have the grid? Because I don't know how you can just look at it. If all these apartments look the same, how are you telling me that that's not, like, how do you know that's not your kitchen? Can you go to the other side? Yeah, this is the other side. Okay, I recognize the light. Okay. Yes, I all recognize right, so the light. All right, so these are your tiles? For the kitchen, not for the, not for the rest of the apartment. What, your and bathroom, what is the cabinet? The cabinet in your bathroom is what color? Um, brown. Wood. Not wood, but laminate or what Yeah, right, right, yeah, but wood color. Wood, wood. I just wanted yes. to know if it was white also or not. No. What room is that? I have no clue. Well, look at the cabinetry. I when the him, brush gets I, close I to the cabinetry, him, it looks like it's the bathroom, right? I asked him the same question after he sent it to me, too. Okay, well. I, if you see in my message, I asked him the same question. What the f is this? Where is this? Because I didn't recognize it. Okay, but is it not your bathroom that you told me had wood cabinetry? Because you can see in the video that there's wood cabinetry. Yes, okay. it has wood cabinetry. And does but it have white not, tiles? But, what you're saying is you didn't leave it this way. Hell to the no. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at your pictures and see what your pictures show. And these were taken on my last day, as you could tell. The place was empty. This is exactly the picture he showed me. Yes. Yeah. What is this a picture of? That is the bathroom. How many bathrooms do you have? Two. Okay, so is one dark brown that and was... the other one is lighter brown? Yes. Okay. One was the guest and one was the master, yes. Baseboards are pretty nasty. Why are the baseboards looking like that? I cleaned them prior, but on the day I'm leaving, no, I did not because I had to work, so. All right. So every state has their own laws, Mr. Upal, about um, what a landlord's rights and obligations are. Particularly owning as many properties as you guys own down there, you need to know, it's, it's like 20 pages that you need to know. I get this impression that maybe your dad you know, like just, ah, let's put the baby. It's not like that. You have 15 days after the tenant leaves to return a security deposit. And if you're not going to because you've found damage, you have 30 days after they leave to send written notification. And the statute actually tells you what to say in the letter, itemizing why you're keeping the money. It is very important that from here on in, your father abides by that. He can't just go, I had an old school father too. <laughs> okay, he was very passionate. And I, you know, my, my old school file is say, ah, you know, he comes to my house, he's doing my construction in my first home, and he decides he's gonna change where the septic tank is gonna go from where the architect put it in the city. But I thought it would look better, you know, like, no, it's not like a reasonable approximation. You know, we owe them everything we have, you and I, um, so we don't make fun of them, but we, it's also, you know, it's also kind of our job to keep them on the straight and narrow. So it's got to, that is how every single security deposit has to be handled. It has to be, it's a, I already, a judge knows when they see half that there's just, you know, kind of a, eh, and it's not itemized. That's just a judgment call that he makes and he shouldn't be making judgment calls like that. He has to follow the law. I think really what happened here is, is that after our realtor and our contractor went to the unit, their recommendation was, uh, look, the Can you prove here that by the giving amount. me anything that the only people who saw the unit, only people, because you guys didn't, can you give me any testimony from them today? No, right? So it's because, hearsay. No, we have. I, I mean, we, we legitimately spent like over $15,000. We had appliances. I've sent you Yeah, I don't care if you beautify the place and you spend $15,000 on new appliances. The place needed new appliances. I saw her appliances. It's time for you. It if is. you wanted to make more money out of the rental, you have to put some money into it. I don't really care if you spent $15,000. I have one job to do here today, and that's to find out how much of her security deposit you're allowed to keep by law. So if she left it dirty, you're allowed to, to keep for cleaning. If she damaged stuff, you're allowed to keep for damage. That is all I care about. I don't care how much you guys spent, you know, to, to beautify the place and make no, more I rent. Understand. No, no, so I so I what's we're... missing here is, oh, the realtor said this, and oh, the other one said that. The next time you come to court and you're being sued for this, you should have the realtor and you should have the contractor who actually stepped in there to see it. Okay, she's shown me her pictures and I can see the state of the baseboards 
and I can see, you know, I don't know if I necessarily buy that, oh, that's not my apartment. Because the only reason she's saying that is that she wouldn't have left it that way. But I see how the baseboards were left. The, you know, the pictures are so up close that she's saying, that's someone else's apartment. But I know that they're her apartment because I know she has a light wood one and I can see the light wood and the scrubbing. I know that she has a dark wood one because she showed me the dark wood bathroom. And I know that that's her kitchen because when I pressed her, she said, yeah, that's my kitchen. And I know that you got these pictures. You know, you're telling me that you got them from the realtor and the contractor. But just so you know, you're kind of unprepared in court without having sent the, the written notice to her of itemization without having the testimony of the people who actually went into the apartment. So based on the pictures that she gave me, where I see that there's definitely a cleaning fee that should be charged, I'm gonna order you to return part of her deposit that you kept back and order $300, not 5,000. I don't know where you thought a $550 case becomes a $5,000 case just because you're angry. Ah, punish them. No, that's not how the law works. $300 verdict for the plaintiff. So the judge determines the plaintiff should get $300 back, not the $5,000 she wanted. Uh, the defendant has learned a good bit about what I think uh, they are supposed to be doing in this case. Mr. Rapal, let me ask you, uh, are you okay with this? You, you heard the judge. She says you've got to give $300 back. What's your reaction to that? I mean, the damage to our unit was well over $5,000, which she was suing um, yeah. uh, for. Um, but I mean, I respect the judge's uh, decision and um, yeah, we're fine with that. Well, as she said, you, you were kind of unprepared for the case in court. You should have had you know, your contractor and the manager of the apartment there to, uh, to testify with you. So in any event, you, you accept it. That's OK. Uh, you're going to give her three hundred dollars back. Now, let's talk to the plaintiff. Uh, Donna, you were suing for five thousand dollars. You're not getting anywhere near that. You're getting three hundred bucks. How do you no. feel about that? I'm fine with it. I was just doing that because I know they did not follow protocols. So that was just my point of doing it. If they had followed protocols, then that would be different. All right. Well, you're absolutely right there. So in any event, at least you understand and uh, you you accept the $300. Sorry, it's not 5000 <laughs> He just couldn't get that. Sure. Okay. It wasn't about the money. Again, it's about protocol. Protocol. You also call it principle. Yes. Same thing. Okay, and principle. And principle. Exactly. All right. <laughs> well, that'll bring this case to a close, a peaceful close at least. Harvey, what you think? So the holy grail in cases like this, you take pictures, and not just when you leave an apartment, and not just the tenant, both the landlord and the tenant should take complete pictures, a complete set, before the tenant moves in, and then take pictures when the tenant moves out. You can compare the two. That's all she wrote. I'm starting an online business where I'll be selling custom shoes. So pretty much I'll have customers send me a picture, I'll print it out on the shoe. Can I get in trouble if they send me a copyright photo, for example, a Bob's Burgers or a South Park photo and I print it out and sell it to them? Or are they going to be liable? Are they messing with me because they know how much I like Bob's Burgers and South Park? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> no, they're not going to be liable. The, the crime of violating a copyright is that you are profiting from someone else's work product. You're going to be liable. Right. Um, so you'll probably first get a cease and desist. And, uh, and then if you don't obey that, you'll end up in court. Um, right. So people do this kind of thing all the time. They violate the damages. But, but you can certainly get sued for damages. And no, you don't, you don't uh, get the right to use someone else's work right. and that's, profit. That's intellectual property. Correct. That's their property that they've generated. And this, this idea of copyrights and trademarks and trade secrets and intellectual property is so important in this country that it's in the Constitution. It's in Article One, Section 8 of the Constitution. It's right there. The Founding Fathers wanted to make sure that people had copyright protection, so no. And the reason why is because if you know that if you pour a million hours into something, something great will happen, you should be able to benefit right. from it. If everyone else can copy it, then the first guy's not going to put the million hours in. Right. And so we as a society will do without this invention and that invention and this, you know, creativity. It would completely stifle creativity. Right. There'd be no point in developing a better mousetrap, in developing a, a cure for a disease or anything else. I know you just can't wait for another session of the People's Court. So guess what? You can check out our podcast or our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.